Hello, and welcome to another presentation in this series of videos on DataColor Spider 3 Monitor Calibration Products. This video demonstrates features of the software that are only available in the Spider 3 Elite application. The next menu, which appears only in Spider 3 Elite, is the Tools menu. The first item in the Tools menu is the Curves window. This provides a graphic display of the various tone response curves that are involved in monitor calibration. There are four different curves which can be viewed. You can turn on and off the curves to just look at what is of interest and also to toggle them on and off for comparison. Each curve has three channels, red, green, and blue. You can choose to view all channels or just one channel at a time using the channel pop-up menu. As with all screens in the Spider 3 software, there is a help button which provides detailed information on this window. If you have multiple monitors, you can go to the Select Display screen where you choose which monitor's information to display in the Curves window by selecting from the pop-up menu. The target curve is the desired tone response curve. This is commonly referred to as gamma. If you display the target curve, you see a graphic display of the curve's response showing the effect on input values from RGB 0 to 255. The uncalibrated curve shows the tone response of the monitor before calibration. You can select to look at just one channel at a time by using the channel pop-up menu. Toggling the target curve illustrates the difference between the uncalibrated monitor and the target tone response. The calibrated curve shows the tone response curve of the monitor after calibration. Ideally, this curve will match the target curve. You can compare the two curves by toggling one of them off and on. Toggling the checkboxes also allows you to compare with the uncalibrated curve. Here is the target curve, which is the tone response that calibration should adjust the display to. Toggling the calibrated curve, you can see that it matches the target curve. This indicates that the tone response calibration worked well. The correction curve shows the curves which are downloaded into the video card. These curves are the end result of calibration and are what adjust the uncalibrated tone response of the display to match the target response curve. Actually, the correction curve can be used to adjust two characteristics of the monitor, tone response and also white point. If there is no white point correction being asked for, such as when calibrating to native white point, then the correction curves will all come together at 255 and all they are doing in between 0 and 255 are adjusting the tone response. If a white point correction is also being incorporated into the calibration, then the red, green, and blue channels will end at different output luminance levels for RGB input 255. The further spread out the channels are here, the more white point calibration is being performed using the correction curves, and the more white luminance of the display is being traded off for white point calibration. What this means is, for example, if you are putting in a full green signal, 255 green, the effect of the correction curve is going to be to output less than 255 green in order to achieve the target white point. This difference here, the spread at the upper right, is the amount of green luminance that is being traded for the white point correction. Hence, the calibrated monitor will appear slightly darker than the uncalibrated state. 
If the native white point of the display is close to the target white point, then this spread will be reduced. Less white luminance is lost and the results are more efficient. As was mentioned previously, this is why it is important to set the native white point of the display as close as possible to the target white point by using the color temperature preset controls in the monitor itself. The next item in the menu is the history window. This window gives you an indication of how the monitor is aging over time. Generally, what wears out on LCD monitors is the backlight, so over time the monitor gets dimmer. At first, this can be corrected by increasing the backlight level to keep it constant, but eventually the backlight control is set to maximum and the monitor just continues to grow dimmer. The first tab of this window, Luminance Graph, tracks the white luminance of the display over time. Generally, this should be a horizontal line, then as the monitor ages, it will start to dip down. The second tab of this window, Detailed Data, reports some numerical data across time. The white luminance Y column is the numeric data that is plotted in the Luminance Graph tab. White XY and white Kelvin track the measured white point. Red, green, and blue XY track the color values of the monitor's primary colors. These values should not change greatly unless the monitor's filters or phosphors fade or change. Notice that the information displayed here are the uncalibrated values, because this is a report on the hardware condition, not the quality of the calibration. The delta numbers shown at the bottom provide an average of the delta or difference between each measurement over time. If the monitor is not changing, the average difference between measurements should remain very small. The last item is the Edit Curves window. This lets you adjust the target curve in real time while viewing the effect of the resulting calibration on screen. You could, for example, open a sample image and make small adjustments to the calibration if you felt that it needed tweaking. You can adjust any of the points along the target curve by clicking the up and down arrow button at the bottom. When you click OK, you will be prompted to save a new target file. That target will then be available in the Select Target pop-up menu. If you want your adjustments to be permanent, then you must save the edited target and recalibrate the display using that target to create a new profile. Are we done yet? 